This is a White House concentrating on Tuesday's important State of the Union speech by the President. But it's not taking its eyes off Ukraine, a point made by the Vice President at an event marking the end of Black History Month. Today, the eyes of the world are on Ukraine and the brave people who are fighting to protect their country and their democracy. And their bravery is a reminder, a most recent reminder, that justice, equality, and freedom must never be taken for granted by any of us. The US has announced a new round of economic sanctions, this time targeting Russia's central bank. One senior White House official says they want to drive the Russian economy backwards while Vladimir Putin is pushing his tanks forwards into Ukraine. They want to drive up inflation, drive down investment possibilities and cripple the purchasing power of the Kremlin. The US State Department revealed it was also going after the money and assets of those closest to the Russian leader. And we are standing up a joint task force to find and freeze assets of sanctioned Russian companies, oligarchs and other government officials. These actions will severely impact Putin's inner circle, impede the Kremlin's use of its international reserves and limit its ability to fund ongoing destabilizing activities, including the Kremlin's war machine in Ukraine. Putin has increased Russia's nuclear alert level, which prompted reporters to ask the US president if Americans should be worried by the threat of nuclear war. He shut that the idea down America with a one-word answer. No. One top U.S. senator, the head of the Intelligence Committee, Mark Warner, says he sees no immediate threat to Putin's rule in Russia, but the U.S. is expecting and preparing for a surge in cyber attacks and retaliation to the actions already approved as the fighting in Ukraine continues. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, at the White House.